Well, now to speak more on this development, legal expert Liberos Oshoma joins me now. Thank you very much for joining me, Liberos. Now, there are currently two standing orders from the Supreme Court and the Central Bank of Nigeria. Please clarify, does one supersede the other? It is one, one order. There are no two orders. Um, what the, Supreme, what the um, Supreme Court did was um, the Supreme Court gave an order. And um, that order, the Supreme Court today again reiterated. And, and so the, the, the CBN order cannot override the Supreme Court order. That's, that's except we are saying we are in a lawless society. So um, there are no two orders. The parties have submitted to the jurisdiction of the courts to determine jurisdiction because I learned their applications to determine jurisdiction. And the court had said, well, pending while we do that, some other persons have applied to join as interested parties in the matters on the ground that they are also affected. And so while we are waiting to do that, we have joined all the parties that want to be joined. So hold fire till on the, the 23rd of February and we reinstate the order we made before now that parties should maintain status quo pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice. And then let parties go and join issues on it and then come back and the court will hear it. The order we issued earlier on still stands. So the Supreme Court cannot, uh, sorry, the CBN cannot come and say, we are going ahead with the deadline that we had issued despite the Supreme Court of the land saying that parties should maintain status quo. That is why you hear um, uh, Kano Agabi SAN saying that uh, there are no two sides. It's just one side that they're finding the solution. But the only thing I find curious in all of this argument is this attempt at blaming banks. It is sad that um, the, the, the stakeholders, people who should know, People who are knowledgeable in this thing are pushing the blame to banks, and that is causing the banks hardship because the ordinary man on the street who does not understand. But yes, it is, it is not healthy. It is not healthy for our, uh, our people to make. Especially very senior lawyer at that level, it, it is uh, it is quite unfortunate. The right, question no. should be now: What hardship will the CBN suffer if it decides to obey the order of the court to allow both currency coexist? What hardship will the CBN suffer? Why the fire brigade approach? That's the question we should be asking. And is there enough cash for the bank to put in the ATMs? Can the bank print? To, uh, 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 Naira and put in the ATMs. Is it not the CBN that allocates cash to the banks to put in the ATMs? If the banks do not have a note to put in the ATM, would they pour water there? So let us unnecess not unnecessarily inflame people and allow them, the illiterate ones, to begin to destroy banks by our statement. I think, um, you know, we should all be circumspect when we make a certain statement that we are truly not uh, fully aware of. Um, it's quite now, how, and sorry to cut you That's, short here, but how do you expect the situation to eventually pan out? And what significance does this Supreme Court order have on the controversy surrounding the redesigned Naira policy? There's no controversy. First and foremost, let's not understand this issue. Nobody, none of the parties is saying that the CBN does not have the power to redesign the Naira node. None of the parties is saying that. None of the parties is saying that the redesigning of the Naira note or the swapping of the Naira note is a bad policy. No. What they are, like uh, Governor Yaya Bello has said, what they are after is the implementation of the policy, that the fire brigade approach implementation of the policy and the deadline is creating untold hardship on the people and that uh, um, uh, 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 they should allow reasoning to prevail and allow an extension of the policy so that as it is done like we always say here so that they allow uh, what do you call it um a, a, a application of international best practice allow both currency to coexist until you phase out the old currency and then the new currency becomes operational 
We have redesigned uh, 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 the lower denomination from uh, the paper denomination to polymer. There was no crisis. We redesigned the 100 naira note, and there was no crisis. So I, it, what is creating this crisis is the non-availability of the note and then the deadline. So what you are seeing happening now is that those people that have some of the currency are going to keep it to say, well, I don't know what will happen, especially considering the fact that the election is around the corner. So they don't know what is going to happen. So they are going to keep the little that they have because there is scarcity. Once the supply is low, demand will be high and the prices will be high. So that's basically what it's playing out. It's a simple economics. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry I have to cut you short here, but thank you for your time and your okay. contribution.